In this video, I'm going to talk about a very simple productivity hack that has literally 10x my productivity, that has absolutely changed my life. And I know it sounds too good to be true, but it's not. This is the truth. This is, look, it's anecdotal. This is something that has been true for me that doesn't mean it's going to have the same impact on everyone watching this. But I do think there's potential, and because it's been so profoundly transformative in my own life, I want to share it so other people might try it. And even if it, you know, only gives you a 10% increase in productivity or a 5% increase in productivity as opposed to a 10x increase, it still is extremely valuable. And if one other person 10x's their productivity because of this video, well, I, of course I have to share this. Now, I've experimented with ways of reducing my TV, Netflix, video games, all those kinds of things because being completely honest, I can be very easily addicted to them. There have been times when I have watched like six, eight hours of YouTube and Netflix uh, in a single day. I would watch people play like Overwatch, even though I don't play the game. I played it a little bit a long time ago and I would watch the pros play Overwatch. Why? I, d I don't, it does nothing for me. It's not good content. It doesn't enrich me in any way. It's not like, there's no real value to it. There's much more entertaining content I could be watching or more valuable content I could be watching, but it's just this like comfort kind of food. It's this noise in the background that distracts me from my stress. And so I would do things like that for long stretches and it, it was very detrimental to my life. And so what I've tried to do is use apps like Cold Turkey and the in iPhones, uh, let me get the name for you. Uh, in iPhones, there's something called screen time, which allows you to limit the allowance you have for using something like Google Chrome. It blocks it after a certain amount of time or during certain hours. And I would try using these things. And what I would do is I would block it for say, I could only use Chrome for an hour or I could only use it after 7 p.m. Or, or different things like that. And then I would lock the app. It would have a, you could put in a password. So I'd give a friend or my girlfriend or whatever, I'll give them a password and then I wouldn't be able to get around the block. I couldn't circumvent the block because of that. And for a week, maybe two weeks, it would work great. But there would be this kind of itch that would get stronger and stronger where I just, I need some YouTube. I need some Netflix and it would just this kind of like Gollum, the precious, I mean, the precious. That was the energy behind it really. And that would get stronger and stronger and stronger. And eventually I would like hard reset the phone, All right? Or I would, I would look up on the internet how to circumvent uh, cold turkey, how to delete the app. So I'd find ways around these hard blocks and it wouldn't work in the long term. It was too forceful, it was controlling me too much to the point that I had lost my sense of autonomy and one of the biggest human needs is autonomy. The feeling that you are making your own decisions, not someone else, but also not your past self. If your past self is making your decisions for you, it's not you in the now and then you become your own enemy. You become, you feel like you're a prisoner to yourself. And so that causes this resistance that builds and builds and eventually breaks. The same thing has happened when I've used apps to make a bet for say losing weight. I had a bet to get down to 10% body fat in one month. And at the time I was like 15% body fat. So that's a pretty uh, crazy one month goal. And what I did is I worked out four hours every day. Oh, by the way, I put like $500 on this, which was a lot to me at the time. So I would work out four hours every day, three hours of biking, one hour of insanity, the P90X uh, beach body workout every day. And I would eat 1600 calories following the slow carb diet by Tim Ferriss. And at the end of my workouts, I would be extremely anxious, extremely uncomfortable, but because I had this long-term goal, because I had this money on the line, I persevered. I pushed myself harder than I ever had before. I pushed myself to pretty extreme lengths to get into shape. So I did end up getting to 10% body fat, at least according to the measure I was using, which probably wasn't that accurate because I didn't have a six pack, but that's besides the point. I lost a lot of weight. And I was successful, but only in the short term. What happened? The next three months, I gained all the weight I had lost 
and more because all that like constriction was kind of like pulling a rubber band farther and farther and farther and farther and eventually it snapped. So once I finished the goal, I won the bet. I was doing those habits not out of any joy or enjoyment or desire. I was doing it just for the long-term goal. So I ended up going in the opposite direction, binge eating, I stopped working out, and <coughs> in the long term, I did not get the results I want. So when it comes to self-improvement, you do have to challenge yourself. You do have to create, do something that you have resistance to. That's by definition, like if you want personal growth, you have to get out of your comfort zone. But you can't get too far out of your comfort zone because then you start to resent yourself. If you try to control yourself and force it at a certain point, uh, your willpower runs dry and then you burn out. That's what tends to happen. Uh, maybe there's exceptions. I'm not saying it's impossible to overcome that, but that's been my experience up to this point, no matter how hard I've tried. Recently, I tried a different strategy for blocking websites. I'm still using cold turkey and I'm still using the, uh, the iPhone blocker. And what I'm actually doing is I have it blocking 24 hours a day. It's a, on a schedule. You can put these apps on a schedule. So I've scheduled downtime where I'm not allowed to use anything that's distracting. So like Chrome, YouTube, Netflix, video games, all those kinds of things. They're pretty much completely blocked, but I didn't put a lock on it. So if I want to, I can just turn it off. I just have to go to the app, turn the block off, and then I can use YouTube again. And I do occasionally do that. Sometimes I have a craving to watch YouTube that's strong enough that I end up, you know, circumventing the block. But what I found is that very often I don't do that. There are a lot of times when I want to go watch YouTube or Netflix and having that block up gives me a chance to think twice. It creates distance between stimulus and response, and it lets me make a more conscious decision. It lets me think, is this actually going to be good for me? Probably not, as opposed to just getting sucked in. So it creates space that allows me to make a better decision, and doing this has caused me to be drastically more productive because it turns out the main reason I'm not usually recording a YouTube video or writing, which I've done these things enough that they've become enjoyable to me. It's just starting takes some energy and it's easier to start watching YouTube. Of course, it's easier to do, it takes less energy. And so that resistance to starting has been a problem. Well now, because I have distance, because I have that space to make a better decision, instead of going to YouTube, I start reading. And then I start reading and then I'm in a more productive state and then I start writing or making a YouTube video or something else that is productive. And this has literally 10 x my productivity. This has had a profound impact on the amount that I've been getting done. Now, I can't say for sure that in the long term this will continue to be so effective and I will update you guys on in a month, in three months. As to whether this has been effective in the long term, that is something that I want to make clear that I can't say for sure that this is going to work forever. But so far, this has made a huge difference and I encourage you to give it a shot. It might sound weird, might sound dorky, whatever. If it works, then why not? Why not try? Maybe it won't work, but it just requires you download cold turkey. Uh, there's a paid version that I'm not sure if you'll need based on how you want to block it. It's 35 bucks, that's, that's what I paid for it. Uh, definitely worth it. And the blocking software on iPhones and also Macs is free. It comes with something that does a good job of that. You just have to set a password up and you know the password so you can always get around the block if you need to or if you really want to, but it helps create distance between the stimulus of wanting to watch a video or do something that is you know not in your long-term interest that can help you make a better decision. So why not try? Why not give it a shot and see what happens? Uh, treat this like an experiment. This is almost a, I, I kind of want to see this as like a low budget, uh, not super scientifically sound experiment. 
psychology experiment. If you're watching this video, just set up one of those apps and there are different ones that can block uh, the internet. There's tons of apps that do this. You can just look up app blockers, stuff like that. But I personally think cold turkey is very useful and the Apple one, the one on iPhones and uh, Macs is really good too. And that comes with the software. And then there's one that comes with Androids as well. I'm not sure if it's as good, but what all of these allow you to do is set a schedule or limit the apps to say one minute per day. Um, there's different ways you can do it, but uh, this has made a huge difference. And so I want to see uh, if it's just effective for me or if this is genuinely something that can be transformative for other people as well. So if you decide to give it a shot, then let me know in the comment section below and I'd like to hear an update like a week from now to see if it's made any difference. Uh, that'd be very interesting to me and I hope that this little hack, this very simple thing that has had a huge impact on my life so far can help improve someone else's life as well. With that said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button. If you don't hit the bell button, you won't be notified when I release a new video. And let me know in the comment section if you're gonna take on this challenge. And I'm curious to see what ends up happening.